It's described as having the head of a frog, the face of an elephant, and the body of a spiky lizard-like creature with dinosaur-like legs. It's the Hodag, a fearsome creature that terrorized a Wisconsin town. Well, sort of. The Hodag is a great story. The story actually begins in 1893 in a small north-central Wisconsin town known as Rhinelander. My name is B.J. Hollers. I'm the author of Midwestern Strange, Hunting Monsters, Martians, and the Weird in Flyover Country. There was a guy named Gene Shepard. He was a timber cruiser, so it was his job to help the lumber companies figure out where the timber was and how to cut the timber and get it to the mill and all of those things. But he was also a town booster, and he really wanted people to get off the train at Rhinelander and stick around to invest in this community. And so he thought one of the ways to do this was to concoct an entirely original story, and that story is known today as the Hodag story. The horrible, terrible, no good, very bad, kind of hard to believe, Hodag. According to the original versions, it was this black creature. It's described in all sorts of ways, but generally it's described as having the head of a frog, the face of an elephant, and the body of kind of a spiky lizard-like creature with dinosaur-like legs. That's just one version. Other versions it's said to look like a, a cross between a lizard and an ox. You name it, there's a variation. Sort of the moral of the story, it's always a, a concoction of some variety and always rather terrifying. He said that he hunted it with the best hunters in town, where they used chloroform to kind of knock the creature out, at which point they took the hodag and they put it in the back of a wagon and brought it to Rhinelander, Wisconsin, and then tossed it in a pit, where they kept it at for safekeeping uh, for some time. He created this story and it became this real hit. People would in fact get off the train in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, and they would ask to see the hodag. And so Gene Shepard was really quite the showman. And what he would do was he would enlist the help of his sons and he would say, oh, absolutely, we can see the hodag today. And then he would kind of, you know, give a whistle or some kind of gesture to his children who would then hide in the back of the barn and begin making all of these noises. And then there would be all this screaming and shouting. He would jump back out. Only this time when he ran back to see the folks, he would be wearing this shredded suit coat. He literally would change his clothes back there into this shredded variation of what he was already wearing just to kind of add a little more appeal to the whole story. Now, more than a century later, the Hodag shows no signs of leaving Rhinelander, Wisconsin. The legend just continues to grow. The beauty of the Hodag story is that it's been kind of reimagined time and time again. In 2012, there was an entire Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated episode all about the Hodag. That can't be the thing that attacked Daisy. It's so fake. The Hodag is a master of deception. A few years later, J.K. Rowling reintroduced the Hodag as one of her fantastic beasts in a book. The Rhinelander community is really a wonderful group of people, but you can't go from one street corner to the next without seeing some mention of the Hodag. As soon as you drive into town, you can't pass the Chamber of Commerce building without seeing like a 30-foot fiberglass version of the Hodag. It is just incredible. It's just this beautiful piece of art. The legend of the Hodag is as alive and well as it's ever been. Which is to say, you know, the creature itself may not be alive and well, but the story remains strong. What I love about the people of Rhineland is that they really know that this is something worth talking about. This is something worth celebrating. This is Inside Edition. Hodag.